Hi, welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. If you've been following my videos for a while, you've probably seen my homemade miniature airboat. And you've probably heard me mention that I'm planning to put wheels on this thing. Now, why would I want wheels on an airboat? It's a perfectly good boat, right? Well, I'd like to be able to use it on land as well. Unlike some of the more legit larger airboats, this miniature airboat isn't quite powerful enough to push itself across land. So, unfortunately, I can't slide this across sandbars or certain swampy areas or other land-based travel. And I've been trying for a while to figure out just how do I put wheels on this thing. I've gone through multiple design ideas. Mostly, my main concern has been how do I steer that front wheel on land? So yesterday, after a few beers, I kind of thought, why do I need to steer that front wheel? What if I just make it like a shopping cart where the wheels or wheel in the front pivot freely, and I steer with the propeller and the rudder on the back with air power? Now, before I go bolting shopping carts onto this thing or building some kind of forward caster tricycle arrangement, I need to see if it's even feasible to do that. So I'm going to throw the boat on these wheel dollies and see if I can drive it around in my driveway and turn just using the engine and my air rudder back here. Alright, that worked pretty well, but I can't have a bunch of rolly carts with the boat all the time, and the wheels on those rolly carts really aren't big enough to go over anything rougher than a driveway. Now, I do have some bigger off-road tires for the rear, so I should see if it still turns if it has fixed wheels at the rear versus casters, and then a pivoting wheel towards the front. So I'm going to swap out that rear cart for these balloon tires that came with the original paramotor that I got this with. So I'm also overloading those balloon tires on the rear. Uh, those are made for a very lightweight paramotor trike thing and not a big heavy boat. So at some point I suspect I'm going to either break those, wreck the bearings, break the axles, pop those wheels, something like that. I've got these that I think are from a wheelbarrow. They're still not quite as big and beefy as I want. I'd like to be able to go over some amount of off-road stuff. And this was the front wheel from that paramotor trike. I've also got some bike wheels, but I don't know if those are going to hold up to the weight of this thing either. So, I think I might need to go back to Axeman and look for some more wheels. I'm also curious if I could get away with just having a single front wheel pivoting like a caster, and if that would work the same as having these little four-wheeled caster dollies underneath. So I might have to make something to experiment with that, and then if that works, I might go ahead and just put on a front single wheel and then uh, test that until my balloon tires die or break or otherwise fail. And then maybe I'll beef it up with something a little better. Ha! 
All right, I forgot Axeman opens late on Sunday, so I was not able to stop by there, but I went to the hardware store and I got this giant caster wheel. So I'm going to try to throw this on some kind of sled to start with, just make sure it works, and then build a more permanent mounting for it. That's kind of what I was thinking. It's way higher, so eventually I'll move it forward, but let's just see if it'll turn on one wheel up front. Yes, it does turn. It doesn't turn as fast as it did with the two caster wheelie dollies under it. And that was turning more like donuts and just kind of spinning because it had uh, casters under both ends. So it doesn't turn quite as fast when those rear wheels are fixed and only the front wheel pivots. However, it does turn. Now the other thing I noticed is this new wheel has much less rolling resistance than those little casters with their tiny little wheels. And it's hard to stop this thing once it gets moving. So you saw me smash into the snowbanks a couple times. Letting off on the gas doesn't really slow you down because you're still moving with quite a bit of momentum. Uh, similar to the videos where I was running it on ice. Once you let off the gas or even stop the engine, you're just sliding for a long ways. So I can't really use this anywhere with a hill or anywhere that I need to stop because I don't have any brakes at all. So I think that was a pretty good proof of concept that shows me that the single bow wheel is going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and build something a little better that makes that bow wheel mounted more securely, but also mounted in a way that it's a little more convenient to pop on and off. So if I'm boating along and I come to somewhere that I want to have wheel capability, I can just lift up the front of the boat, drop in the front wheel somehow, and carry on my way. So what I'm planning to do here is have some pipes bolted into the sides and then have this board able to slide up into the pipes on those bolts and then I'll probably have some sort of a little triangular plate in here or another piece of wood to balance the forces going upwards and then I can bolt that caster right onto the bottom of this piece of wood. So when I want to switch back from land mode to water mode I just remove that entire piece of wood, put it in the boat, and boat away.
so I have either built a wheeled airboat or the world's worst hoverboard. Let's fire it up and see if this is steerable in any way. So this isn't working super well, and I think part of the problem is that I have the forward wheel pivoting, but all the turning force is coming from the rear. So I'm thinking of this more like a car when it's on the land where you have the forward wheels turning, when I maybe should be thinking more of it as a boat where the back is turning. So right, right now I have these rear tires fixed. They just want to go forward. So when I turn that rudder, these wheels are resisting my turn by just making the boat want to go forward. And that little wiggly front caster doesn't really have much chance to turn the nose around. So what if I put casters at the rear and made that forward wheel fixed so that it only goes forwards? Now I'm hoping that it doesn't just drift constantly like it did on the lake because I'd like this to actually go straight on land. Now people in the comments keep telling me to do two little rudders rather than one big rudder. Yes, I do read all your comments, even the ones sent by drunken trolls, and I try to respond to them. So keep on commenting if you have ideas. I've read some airboating forums, and a lot of people with real airboats down in swamplands in southern U.S. say that yes, you do want two rudders if you're out on open water. And they make it a little more controllable, less of that spinning and drifting out. However, they also say you want one big rudder like I have if you're trying to maneuver in tight spaces like a creek or a swamp where you're moving around a lot of trees. And I don't honestly know which scenario I'm going to use this boat more in. So I don't know yet which rudder I want to go with. I'm kind of sticking with the one I have now just to see how that works with the wheels. If this ends up working better with the wheel system, I might switch over to this because I want this boat to be fairly flexible in where it can go on land, on water, on ice, and we're gonna have to figure out which rudder system is the best for all those scenarios, or at least not the worst for any one of them. So I made another front wheel that's fixed and doesn't spin, and I made the mounting bracket a little thicker so that it hangs down lower on the boat because my rear wheels are also gonna stick down a little bit more. So now I need to make a mounting bracket for those pivoting rear wheels. So here's version two of the wheels, and I'm already seeing a problem with the rear wheels. This little tiny board that I've used to brace the wheels against the stern is not big enough, and the whole rear wheel assembly is pretty wiggly. So I think I'm gonna need to build a bigger platform to strap underneath the boat. a little bit better. It seems like we need maximum thrust to get that rear end to slide around. All right, so I've got two wheel systems. Neither one of them works very well in my driveway but the driveway isn't really long enough to get a good real-world test. So I think I need to take both of these wheel systems down to somewhere with a longer paved area and give them both a test under some acceleration, some longer runs, some different speeds, and see which one works better. Now, I've got an abandoned Kmart near my house, but unfortunately today the parking lot was booked up by the illegal car show club, so I have to wait for my questionably legal activities until they're done with their questionably legal activities. And then maybe once there's nobody using the abandoned Kmart, I can go down there and race the airboat around it. 
So that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see me race this around, or at least drive this around until something breaks, go ahead and click subscribe so you can see what happens in the next video when I actually get around to putting this to the real world test. And until then, this has been the Save It For Parts channel. We'll see you next time.